proud and happy to be able to show you this, the first video from CMI VFX on using Arnold in Cinema 4D. It's a brand new iteration of Arnold. I've been testing this um, amazing rendering package out and from Softmage, Maya, Houdini, and now Cinema 4D. I think it's really matured and its integration with, uh, with Cinema 4D is, is pretty amazing. We'll be going over lighting, we'll be going over specular reflections, and um, just the, the amount of control you have over over area lights and the softness and, and the bounce of the light back and forth. Uh, we'll talk about specular highlights and reflection. We'll talk about how to light bounces uh, in and out of the scene so you have one or two or three diffuse bounces. Using area lights and controlling area lights and the penumbra effect and circle of confusion. And the shaders, this amazing standard shader, you can control anisotropic uh, highlights and be able to um, to adjust it to almost simulate the diffuse uh, highlights. Uh, different shaders too, like the sky shader. Uh, it's a great sky shader. It's built in and it's one of the options you have for creating outdoor effects. And as you bring the sunlight up and down, it picks up atmospheric effects really, really nicely. It's a great alternative to uh, to uh, lighting your scene for, for outdoors, as well as HDR. We'll show you how to use an HDRI image, uh, either from a mirror ball or from a uh, lat long Image. In this case, it's a lat long image from Chicago, where I'm from, and uh, it creates a shadow effects, it creates um, reflections, it just adds a lot of realism. The subsurface scatter system in Arnold is, is really, really great. You have uh, control of different levels of uh, shallow, mid, and deep scatter, and it works with every light source we have. Uh, the volumetric effects are also really great. Any, any uh, light emitting object you bring in, area lights or photometric lights, in this case IES lighting, you can bring in this volumetric uh, system and it participates and creates these really great uh, rock and roll concert or science fiction-y kinds of effects <clears throat> and renders really, really fast. Uh, it's one of the best volumetric systems I've ever had a chance to use. The skin shader will deep dive a little bit more into that and how you can add different maps to different levels of your uh, mid, deep, um, uh, shallow mid and deep scatters, as well as uh, um, creating displacement maps. We'll actually be able to dive into the uh, network editor and create your own set of networks and add and change different kinds of uh, vector-based displacement or in this case we're just going to go over the uh, the standard displacement shaders and the um, the IPR window here. You can actually make all these changes and see all the things your lighting and, and your shaders all in real time. Then we'll add a few more projects in there. We'll open up some scenes from Cinema 4D to come stock with Cinema 4D and just we'll change around the, uh, the lighting and use Arnold's lighting in, a, in some of these uh, scenes that come shipped with Cinema 4D. And see how fast and easy it is to use all the controls, all the tagging you do in Cinema 4D and it just is all built in. There's no, there's no real uh, change in your workflow if you want to go from this standard render that comes with Cinema 4D and try out Arnold. It's a quick and uh, easy transition. So we'll try some volumetric effects as well as the, uh, the the shader system, the environmental shaders in there, and have geometry create lights and have those participate into the volume as well and see those effects in real time, which is kind of nice. So just a couple of quick, uh, quick tricks. And then we'll go into the inside. We'll go in the interiors and open up a scene that, again, comes shipped uh, freely with uh, Cinema 4D. And just kind of look at the lighting itself without without the textures in the scene, just uh, to try to create a sense of mood and uh, an atmosphere. So again, we're going to use the area lights or the IES lighting that's built in, and be able to control the lights like a theater or a film set, and be able to be a lighting technician. Uh, we can add um, gobos to the lights using again using that uh, uh, network editor for the uh, for the shader system. So we can add a little. Uh, projectors into the into the light scene to add a little bit more mood and uh, different kinds of effects. Uh, we'll, we'll build sets and, and build a, like a, almost a miniature or a, a studio setting for product shots. So in this case we're going to go into a little bit of uh, glass and refraction, indices of refraction and how to create a sense of thick glass with the, the glass shaders that come stock with, uh, with Arnold. And we'll use the amazing um, procedural ASS system to create multiple objects. These are 
or multi-thousand polygon objects and using a scatter, just scattering them into the scene. And they render almost immediately. There's no waiting for irradiance mapping to, to build. It just starts rendering immediately. So you start to see the advantage of the sort of brute force Monte Carlo uh, rendering systems. We'll we dig, dive a little bit into AOVs and just kind of how to set up AOVs really, really simply and easily within Cinema 4D. It has some nice little special things where you can render out uh, to a Photoshop file and create layered Photoshop files if you choose, as well as a traditional EXR approach for uh, importing into Nuke or other compositing packages. But being able to see all of your passes, all of your AOVs uh, together, be able to take those Photoshop files and bring them all into, uh, into Photoshop uh, and build the layers um, pretty much uh, and see the real-time results. Right, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed.